guys, Dan Riley CG here. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to create custom chest UI in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. This only uses commands, nothing else. Here you can see um, this chest is called Control Panel, and within it we have a bunch of options. We have Teleport Destinations, Set Time of Day, Set Current Weather, Change Game Rules, Set Game Mode, and Summon Mobs. So you can see these settings right off the bat may not be something that you would have available for regular players in a realm or server, um, and maybe this would only be available for admins, but let's check it out anyway. So when I click each um, option, obviously a, a submenu will open up. And this is all just a big illusion, really. Um, but I guess you could say most menus are an illusion. Um, and yes, these are all interactive real buttons. So if I click uh, creative here, um, I just have to click it once, I'm in creative. Um, if I click survival, I'm clearly in survival. And then, of course, adventure. Now I can't break glass. So it's very, very quick, and it's actually very easy to do. It just takes a little bit of uh, concentration, honestly, and um, some, some planning out. So you can see here that we have the main menu button, and that goes back to our main menu. Down here, we have an example of um, basically a, a nested um, system of um, menus where it goes, it's a couple menu systems deep. So here we can, we, when we click on um, summon mobs, we then have two further options to select passive mobs or hostile mobs. So now I can select passive mobs and click on summon chicken. Um, of course, you could fill this to the brim with any summons that you want or even additional pages if you ever, if you were so inclined. Um, and of course, if I click summon chicken, uh oh, oh my god, there he is. Get him. Um, and uh, yeah, and when the chest closes, if you didn't realize this already, the whole system um, goes back to the main menu, which is very convenient. And of course I can go over here to Hostile Mobs um, and uh, summon a zombie. And there he is. Um, okay, so clearly the set time and day, all that stuff works very... Uh, everything works here, all the, all the commands are correct, so I, I can just go through here and click Sunrise, Day, Noon, Sunset, Night, Midnight, and it will just update in instantly, um, very quickly. Um, and obviously, with that said, we can change the weather. So let's go ahead and make it rain. There, now it's raining. And uh, if you didn't notice, we also have a, a custom sound playing our, at ourselves while we're interacting with this chest, um, which I think is cool. It just gives us a, kind of a, I don't know, it just feels cool like you're at this powerful command chest and you have this sound playing at you, which is neat. And then of course there's particle effects, like this magic particle effect going on here. Um, that's really cool too, I think. Uh, we can make it thunder. I'll just take a second, thunder can take a second sometimes. Any time now. Okay, yep, yeah, finally, it's about time. Yeah, it just took its time. And then we can clear the weather. And we can go back. So here, uh, under change game rules, we have some options here. Uh, we can change the settings for TNT to be you know, disable it or enable it, or enable and disable. Um, we can turn command feedback on or off, um, and do insomnia true or false. Now, realistically speaking, I really don't see a, a point to ever having um, like a category for game rules because uh, you would really only set them once and never really change them. The only one I ever change sometimes is command feedback, which sometimes I, I turn on for different things that I'm building, and then I disable it at some point. Um, but that's really the only command I ever go back and forth on. Everything else I kind of just leave set. But I just want to show, um, I don't know, more features in here, more examples of what you can do. You can basically do anything. So how, how does this work, you're probably wondering. Okay, well, it's actually, um, like I said, it's a simple premise um, with a confusing package initially. Like it looks more complicated than it is. So these items that you see right here, they're all renamed. Um, these are all items that you cannot normally obtain in game. Yeah, you see that there's a diamond right here, but this is not a, this is not a diamond that you can normally get in game because normally when you get a diamond in game, it has a data value of zero. This diamond has a data value of one. So we can actually we can actually give ourselves um, with the give command items that don't exist in the game by inputting a data value when there normally isn't a data value for that item. So in this case I input a data value of one for each of these items. Once any of these items are selected what's happening here is the item gets deleted from any player's inventory. Like it, the system is looking to see if any player has that item and if that player does have that item then what will happen is the whole system 
um, it will delete that item and then it will run more code after that. So let's let's look to see what I mean here. Let me change my game mode to creative. Okay. So um, before we get into uh, too much of these these commands, again, this looks way more complicated than it is, and I'll show you exactly what's going on. Um, when I look at this uh, teleport destinations, so this is a compass with a data value of one, which again normally they don't exist; they only exist in a data value of zero. So the fact that it exists in one is something unique and, and I can only get it from this chest because I can't get it anywhere else in the game unless I give it to myself with a command. But um, when I'm interacting with this chest and I actually click on this item, it's actually giving me that item but deleting it so quickly that it's imperceptible. Um, you can't even perceive it. So basically it deletes it every game tick, um, which is up to 20 times a second. So yeah, uh, if I was to go here and click on time of day, for example, you can see that uh, the icon jiggles a little bit, just like, like nudges, and that's because you're actually taking the item out and then it's getting deleted, but then it's getting replaced with a cloned um, version. Um, and this all still sounds really confusing, I know, but basically what's happening is when the system detects that I have selected, that I have... Um, a compass with a data value of one in my inventory and it's able to delete it. Once it deletes that item, it's able to run more code. In this case, it knows which item it deleted, so it knows it deleted the compass, so it knows it should load the screen, quote unquote, that I've associated with the compass, which in this case is teleport destinations. So as soon, down here, as soon as it detects, um, if you look at this, as soon as it is able to clear a compass with a data value of one from any player within 10 blocks of that chest that I was just using, um, as soon as that is possible, as soon as it is able to do that, then um, then it can execute the next line of code because the next line of code is a chain conditional, which means it has to, the previous block has to successfully execute in order for this one to execute. And what this one's going to do is it's going to set the location, um, it's going to copy the location, location above it and clone that to um, this location here, which is this chest. So if you look here, this looks familiar. So as soon, basically what happens is as soon as it detects um, that I, for a moment, had the compass with the data value of one, it deletes it for me, and then it runs this code to clone this chest, replacing the chest that I'm looking at. So this creates the illusion that I've just gone to a different screen, or like a different menu screen, when really it just loaded like it's it cloned a different chest into place. Now I'm actually interacting with an entirely different chest. Um, so this system is just based on a bunch of illusions, really. Um, and but it's pretty powerful, and it definitely uh, gives us some options. And yeah, the entire thing is using the clear command, and it's not just a clear command that makes this powerful. What makes it powerful is the fact that you're clearing items that have unique data values that don't normally exist in a game, because without that mechanic right there, if we weren't able to give ourselves unique data values, then the system would not be useful because um, you you would you would basically have to clear, you would run the risk of clearing real diamonds from the player's inventory if you didn't have that option. So um, that's that's what's important about this is that because we can use data values to then get us in the game, we can ensure that we never ever accidentally delete any real items from the player. Um, so this, this, this whole mechanic is um, has been known for a while, um, and it's used in random si um, systems, usually in, in more complex systems. Um, but what it enables us to do is it enables us to run code in other ways. In Bedrock, we are kind of limited in what we can do with code, because especially compared to Java. So we're always looking for ways of thinking outside the box to see how we can um, how we can create new situations where we can run code and create smarter systems as a result of it. And this is just an example of a few of those things put together. Um, so again, when it detects that I've taken the clock with data value of one, it will clone the chest that I've associated with that clock with data value of one, which is right here. So when it, when it, clone, when it sees that, oh, you have a clock with data value of one, again, when it, with the clear command, the first, uh, the first number is actually a data value. The second number is the quantity. Now this is opposite the give command, where in the give command, clearly the first number is a quantity and the second number in the give command 
is the data value. I don't know why they switch it. I swear to God they do it just to confuse new players, um, new command block people and everything. It just, it just really is kind of annoying. But here, once it detects that it's deleted that item successfully, then it will clone this block into place, which gives me all of my um, you know, time of day settings. So, uh, so up here, what's happening up here, um, I'll explain how it powers everything, but what happens up here is this system up here is just my different pages. I just decided that it made the most sense to categorize it this way. Like the, the upper area is all of my individual main menu screens like this. Um, and then the bottom is all of the different options within those menu screens. So for example, if I click spawn, dirt hut or shops, uh, though that those items that it's looking for are down there and um, it will trigger code based on that. And actually, let's just show you that quickly. Um, so I'm gonna change my game mode back to survival. And then I'm going to use my set home, which if you don't know how to do set home in Bedrock Edition um, and home, uh, go ahead and look at my, my video that I made on, about this on my channel. So I just set my home and now I'm gonna teleport. So here I can just teleport to spawn, dirt hut or shops. And this, by the way, this is encompassed with the data value of one. It, they all have unique data values, otherwise the system doesn't work. So that first compass had a data value of one. This compass has a data value of two, then three, then four. So the system can intelligently understand, it doesn't matter that I rename these items, that has nothing to do with the system. Even though I should rename this to spawn, the, um, the game can understand that this, it doesn't see this as spawn, it sees this as a, um, a compass with a data value of two. So that's what this is seen as by the game. So I can name these whatever I want and it doesn't. the game does not care. So as soon as this game detects that I have access, I have just selected this item and pulled it into my inventory and then it can delete it for me. As soon as it's able to delete this item for me um, with this particular data value, we can run code um, based on knowing that, that that item was deleted. So in this case, I can have us be teleported to a specific location because I can say to this, I can define in the system that when this item with the data value of two is deleted, teleport me to these coordinates. And then um, again, with the same concept with the third one, if it, if uh, if something with a data value, if the compass with a data value of three gets deleted, tell me, teleport me to the dark hut, dark hut. So that's how that works. So let's do that. We're gonna teleport, go to spawn, we're at spawn. All right, so we're gonna go back home. We're back home, uh, very fast, dark hut, we're at my fab fabulous dirt hut. It's so amazing. I know you guys want a tutorial on how to build this. Maybe if you beg, I'll, I'll teach you how to build this thing. It's very advanced, um, but let's go back home. Okay, and then uh, finally, we have um, a shop that I recently made a video for. Um, so we go check out that video. It's really cool. Um, okay, so that's how that works. And like I said, most of these features would be useless and you wouldn't want them to exist for people um, outside of admins in, in a realm of server. However, a, a good way to have a system like this for regular players um, in a server realm would be to have the teleport options. Obviously that's very useful for any player. Um, so that would be great for players. So you can, you can fill this with as many as you want. You can change the item, you can change the color of the text. It, none, none of that matters. Like you can use different items just so long as you use different data values for each item. It's, it's all good, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just like the cleanness of like this icon represents teleport destinations and all these icons are just sub of that. So with just a different data value. So it just makes it easy. Um, same thing here. I just wanted, to, it was just how I designed it. I felt like it was clean like that. Um, yeah. So that was the thought process there. And then of course here, um, I can actually go back, like I said, um, to like the previous menu or I can go all the way back to the main menu. So that was another thing. This is like actually two menus deep. Um, or I can just, like again, I don't have to click back, I could just skip back to the main menu entirely. Okay, so um, so let's look at how the system actually functions and why it's actually so smart, because uh, if it's one thing that I care about in uh, Bedrock commands, it's, it's really creating smart systems. I try to create the smart systems possible. And um, oftentimes by smart, that also means just how, how much of the system is activated at, when it's not in use. In this case, this entire system is entirely offline when it's not in use. So this chest that we're interacting with 
that's called control panel. This is actually a trapped chest, which means that while, while the user is interacting with the chest and the chest is open, it actually sends out a redstone signal. Once that redstone, red, redstone signal goes out, the whole system is activated as a result of that. Um, so not one command block is running while the system is offline. That's huge because if this system was always running, we would have probably we would probably have a problem on our Realm server because in order for the system to really be um, truly um, as effective as we want, we want these commands to be running as quickly as possible, which is 20, 20 times a second. So that means that you would have a zero tick delay right here. Um, and if that was happening with all these command blocks always running, then you, you were, you're definitely going to contribute to um, lag or decreased performance on your Realm or server. Um, so we always want to try to limit um, how many always repeating command blocks we have. Um, like repeating always active command blocks because it's okay to have a couple here and there and you, you, it's some systems you just have to have one sometimes but it's it's good practice to make sure that you disable as much of the system as possible when it's not in use so that's absolutely the case here and nothing that's cool is this entire system right here all of these commands all this stuff is actually entirely remotely powered so this can be anywhere um, you can have this chest anywhere you want in the game in an area where you don't have any room for command blocks even and you can have this stuff all hidden away underground and encased in bedrock whatever you want it just has to be in a loaded area and if it's too far away you can put it in a ticking area and if you don't know what a ticking area just google it or youtube it and you can figure that out because a ticking area is an always loaded area that acts like a player is nearby so commands will continue to execute and um like farms will continue to run properly and crops will grow so that's what a ticking area is so um, so long as this area is always loaded, uh, then this whole system will work no matter where this stuff is. In this case, the way this is powered is when I open this chest, as you can see right here, the chest is right there, it will power this red cement block, and that power will go right through to this activate um, this activate bottom uh, repeating command block. So this is repeat unconditional leads redstone with zero ticks of delay. Um, and it's going to set a certain location to redstone block, which means it's going to power some location. Um, and I'll show you that location in a moment. And this is going to activate um, the top. So this is going to be, this is a chain unconditional, always active. And again, we're going to set a different location to a redstone block. And those locations happen to be right here. Let's say this, this is an example of where the redstone would go. Okay. So it would go right there, right on top of these blocks. And then, um, the sound is entirely optional, and the sound is chain conditional, always active. And here's here's the command for that. And right here, plug in the coordinates for wherever your chest is, and then you can enter the radius that you want to be effective. So I have it set to six. So any player within a radius of six blocks around this coordinate will hear this noise while the system is activated. Um, and that's optional. You can you don't have to do that. And then this particle is chain unconditional, always active. Uh, zero ticks to delay. This one works well with zero ticks. Um, and here's a command for that. And right here, this this uh, location, this plug in your coordinates for again the chest, so that the particles will appear at the chest. And again, here's what the particles look like. And there they are. So pretty cool. Um, I thought that was nice. So over here. These are repeating unconditional needs redstone with 20 ticks of delay. That's one full second of delay. 20 ticks is one second. Um, and you have to turn off ex execute on first tick right here. This is what it looks like by default. You don't want this. That's bad um, for, for this particular build. That's bad. So click this right here. So that's disabled. And this means that instead of executing immediately and then 20 ticks after that every 20 ticks, this is going to not execute right away. And then it's gonna wait the full 20, 20 tick duration, so a full second. So once it gets powered, this block will wait a full second before it does anything. And what these, this block is doing, it is setting a location to error, and it happens to be a location right above that command block. So these command blocks are both identical. Again, same exact command, same exact settings for this one and this one. So that way, um, while the system is activated, it's continually reapplying those redstone blocks to here and here. Like it's constantly placing these here and the system's constantly trying to remove them, but it constantly places them. And as soon as, um, as soon as I stop interacting with the system and the chest is able to close all the way, 
then um, then a second later, the whole system will shut down. And and like I said, the whole thing will be offline. So here, where the redstone actually touches um, the redstone block, then the whole system will be charged. And I, you notice I'm using comparators here and not redstone repeaters. The reason for that is because comparators have zero tick delay. So th there's no tick delay for using a comparator. When, but when you use a repeater, there's a single tick of delay, which we don't want in the system. We don't need that in the system. Um, so yeah, if we don't need that and we can get away with doing things all in a single tick, why not? Um, so that's why I have all the comparators. And every single one of these purple blocks here are all the same, with just a slightly different command. Um, they're all repeat unconditional needs redstone with zero ticks of delay. And all of them are clear commands. Every single one of these is a clear command that's trying to clear a different item with a different data value. So every single one is just trying to delete a different item that has a different data value. And then if any of those are able to do that, then it will run the following code next to it. Because the following, all of these chain blocks, all these green ones, these are all chain conditional always active. That's very important. You want to make sure that they're all chain conditional always active so they only can run if this block executes, which means that this block deleted something in a player's inventory. Um, so if you're wondering why do we use clear at A instead of clear at P, well, the reason we don't want to just clear from the nearest player um, is actually uh, pretty legitimate. So if I was right here, I would be the nearest player and maybe I'm taking this uh, diamond with a unique data value out. If there was a player behind me um, and I was using at P and they were opening the chest as well and grabbing diamonds out of the system, then they could keep on grabbing diamonds out and they would never be um, targeted by the system because I'm closer than they are and they could just, while I'm closer and my diamonds get deleted when I take them because like the, the, it's targeting me, they would be targeted so they could just keep on taking all these diamonds. And even though this diamond has unique data value, the thing about it is you can still use it to cre uh, craft regular things. Like you could use it to craft a diamond sword and that diamond sword would have a normal data value. Um, so we want to make sure that no player can ever have these items, period. Um, and if they do have these items, we want something to happen right away, um, which is basically triggering whatever the code next to it is. Um, so this very first one um, is an example of how you can um, limit the radius and make it, make it a little bit smarter. So for example, it's targeting that chest, right? Here's the chest. It's, it's actually focusing on that chest and it's targeting all players within a 10 block radius of the chest and it's clearing all of that compass with a data value of one from them. Now, technically speaking, if I, if I um, wasn't lazy, I would just put this command into all of these blocks. Um, and the only reason that you would want to do that is if you, is this, is if you have any other system in your world that will ever possibly use a compass with a data value of one, um, and like if you ever if you find yourself using um, un items with unique data values in other systems, then you don't want this one to conflict with the other systems. So you can limit the radius on this to only the people who would be affected by being able to pull items out of this chest, because that's really all you want to affect anyway. So um, yes, so if you end up having um, any other systems in your world that require um, unique data value items for some reason and they overlap with this system, then there will be issues uh, with both systems unless you limit the range uh, at which they function. So here again, it only is 10 blocks in any, any direction from this chest. Um, so all the commands should technically be like that, um, but as you see here, instead of saying clear at a clock, um, again, that's less specific that literally any player anywhere in the game, no matter where they are, um, if they are found to have a clock with a, um, an abnormal data value of one, then it will delete it from them and then run code. So that's not a problem unless you have other systems that require that exact data value for something else. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, okay, so all of these run on the exact same concept and the best way to do this, the best way to think about the system is you want to actually literally write down what, um, what data values are going to do what. Um, I wrote them down in um, just a Word document. And just to keep things clear for myself, uh, just it, nothing complex, just little, little notes. And I'll actually provide that in either the description below or I'll put that in the um, a comment and I'll pin it. 
So you can check below for what I use for notes in the system and how I kept it clear. Um, but yeah, so if I if I delete, um, for example, as you can see, there's a there's a barrier block in all of these that has been renamed to main menu, um, main menu, main menu. Um, so here, this is the command block that is going to delete that barrier block with that unique data value of one. So that that um, barrier block that I showed you has that unique data value of one. So when it, whenever it detects that we have that, even for a moment, and it deletes it from us, then it's going to run the next line of code, which is, uh, again, uh, just cloning the above location to the same spot, which is that chest. Then all we have to do, um, then, then, it will, then it will replace the, the chest with the main the main window with the main screen of that chest um, so it makes it look like it went back to like the the default screen um, so hopefully that makes sense so whenever you click back or whenever you click main menu it actually literally just re reclones this main control panel back into place um, so again like I said this system looks a lot more over the top than it really is it's actually very simple so for example all these clone commands are are identical so these, these clone commands are all just uh, cloning one spot above to a certain location, which is the same in all of them. So all I have to do here is just copy the data in one of these blocks, which on PC you can hold control and mouse three, which is the mouse wheel. I'm not sure how to do it on consoles, but I'm pretty sure you can do that in console and mobile. But once you have that data, again, if you look hover over here, you can see plus data. That means when I place this command block, it has all the same settings I stored in it. I can just, I basically, all I had to do was just go back and forth and place place each one. Um, and then I had to do the same for the other side, just tweaking the value a little bit. Um, actually, no, not even a little bit, because these dudes are all above too. So I can just use this on both sides very easily. So you only have to do that command once, and that's that's super easy. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's see. And... Um, so hopefully this is, hopefully this concept is making sense. So this system is not going to be so much. This video is not so much like, hey, I'm going to go over every single command and you have to copy them down verbatim because again, a lot of these are kind of useless. Like, why do you want ga these game rules? Like, why do you want this stuff? Like, that's kind of stupid. But it's just an example of what you could do if you actually wanted to do that. Um, but again, this everything here is on the same premise. Whenever it detects that you've clicked on that, clicked on that um, item and that item has been deleted from you. Uh, with that unique data value, uh, just a different line of code runs and it clones a different chest. So why are these chests off hanging at the end here? What's going on here? Well, this is on both sides and this also adds to that look of, oh my God, this looks too complicated, but it's not. Um, and the reason it's not is because of this. So I can show you um, right here that when I go into set time of day, um, again, this is a clock with a data value of one and this is a clock with a data value of two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And I'm targeting each one with a different command. And if at any point any of them is detected in my inventory, it will instantly, like I said, if you don't, I'm just trying to drive this point home because it's, it's, this whole system is built on this concept. As soon as it detects that this is in my inventory for even one game tick, which is like instantly, then it will delete that. And then because that command block ran successfully and was able to delete, delete something, it can now successfully move down that chain and execute the command the, the chain command blocks that come after it which in this case um, will set the time of day using just the typical um, the, you know the, the set time um, commands so for example let's look at let's find where the time of day is let's see okay it's all right here so when I when it detects for example that I have uh, noon, when I selected noon, which is just a clock with a data value of four, then it will set time set noon. Again, chain condition always active. And then it has to clone a block back into place. And why does it clone? What's happening? Well, uh, that's what I'm about to show you. So if I go into set time day and I click on sunrise, technically, when you see that jiggle, that means it just took that item and it deleted it from you. So you technically just took it out of the um, chest that you're looking at and it just got deleted. So why didn't it just make a hole there? Um, it would do that if you weren't cloning a chest back into place at the end. So for example, uh, that might sound confusing, but it's not. So for example, I can just break this and break this. Um, this this right here is our sunrise and that's the one I wanted to break and not make it not work anymore. 
So now when it detect the text sunrise, what it's going to do is, yep, it's going to delete it. So when it, when, it, when it sees a clock and the data value of two, it's going to delete it right away. And then it's going to set, set the time to sunrise. And then that's it. That's all it's going to do. And then look what happens if that's how we leave it. So we're going to, we're going to go, oh yeah, I just had a bunch of that item on me. Well, okay, so we're going to go back here and you can see there's sunrise. Watch what happens if I click it. That's not good. Uh, we had an icon just disappear. It just broke. Well, again, uh, that's intentionally broken because of just what I just did. And basically what happens is it, it is really deleting these items when you click on them. That's just proof of it right there. But we need to reload this chest so it looks like the icon never went away. Um, and it looks like the user interface was never affected. We want this to be kind of like seamless. We want this to feel like it's a real interface. So we need to clone this chest back into place. And so how do you know which chest to clone? Well, that's really easy. Up here, um, it's very simple. So every if you're if you're dealing with these items right here, the items in the teleport destinations chest, then at the end of where these items are targeted down below, all you're doing is you're going to clone this exact chest at the end. You're going to place this exact chest at the end of that chain. Um, and in the, in the example of the time of day, we want this ch this chest to be cloned again at the end of every single one of these, whenever, whenever any of these items gets deleted, any of these items gets deleted, we want this whole chest to be cloned again so that it looks like it was never deleted. So all we do, we don't have to do anything special with chests here. These are all just, all you're doing is just cloning what you, just copying the block. So here, set time of day, I'm gonna fix that. Grab that, I, I have its uh, data, as you can see, the data, and I'm just gonna drop it right there, and there it is. And now this clone command is identical for every single one of these blocks. Um, and let's take a look at that clone command. Um, this is the only thing that uh, might be conf confusing to you if you're brand new to commands and just looking at this stuff in general. But what's happening here is it's taking the relative dest the relative location of the command block. So when you see those uh, tildes, it's the relative location of something. In this case, the command block. Um, if we left it as if we left it as um, without that one, it would be this is the exact location that the command block occupies, which we would not want. We want it to copy not the command block itself, because right now this would copy the command block. We don't want that. We want it to copy this block next to the command block. So we want to say relative to where the command block is, move over on the Z axis one space in the positive direction. Uh, so that can probably sound confusing. So uh, let's see. So if I walk to the left a little bit, right? Right now I'm at negative 155 in my Z. If I walk to the left, I went negative, uh, negative 54. Did I say 155? What are, if I, I'm negative 55 right now in the Z. If I go to the left once, I'm negative 54, negative 53. So I'm going positive one each step to the left right now. So I need to make sure that in this code, I place positive one right here so that it moves over from that block one location and it clones this block instead. Now, the same thing is happening on this side over here, except now we're going in the opposite direction. We're going one step in a negative direction to get to this chest. And so we're going to put a negative one right here after the, again, this represents X, Y, and Z, and you put those same coordinates in twice. X, Y, Z again, so you put the minus one after both of those Z locations. Um, and that's exactly why, um, oh my God, why can't it fly? So if, that's why when you look at these blocks right here that are cloning a block above them, again, X, Y, Z, this is the Y, so we're gonna go up one space above that. Um, so one space above this command block, which is this chest, and it's gonna clone that to that location. So once you understand that and how to how to put in the proper um, number for where your chest is in your world, it's very easy. Um, you'll realize that all of these clone blocks, every single one on this side is all the same. It's just co copied and pasted like this. That, that couldn't be any easier. And then same with the side. Once you have this side set up right with the, uh, you know, being minus one instead, then you can just go like this over and over. Um, and it's very simple. So that's how that works. And now that we fix this, now that we fix this, so at the end of this chain, when it, once again, when it deletes that sunrise, when it deletes clock two, which is renamed to sunrise, once it does that, it will set the, set the time to sunrise and it will also clone the block right here back into place back into that um, location that I'm interacting with. So it will look like it never disappeared. And now let's do that right now and take a look at it. 
See? It's setting the time into sunrise, but it's it's not going away because it's being instantly replaced every time I click on it. So that's how that works, and hopefully you understand that. Now, um, the point of this, like I said, this, this menu is kind of uh, not the best for players, but why would you want to know all, how to do this? Well, this this knowing this information just lets you do a lot more with coding, and it's, it's just really helpful to know. Um, you can continue to make um, you can do you can execute any line of code you want with this this uh, mechanic where you delete a targeted item from the player's inventory that doesn't normally exist in the game. So you can run anything. You can make uh, a teleport. Like if you would do, if you did want to make different screens like this, you could have a teleport one which players would use. But you could also make one for like buying experience or something, or um, buying items or selling items. You could very easily do that. And you could just have it trigger different systems. It's you can get really creative with how you have it set up, um, or you don't even need to have different screens. You can have it all, this could be one screen and, and only one screen. This could like trade in. You could you could sell diamonds um, by clicking this, and you can I don't know maybe clicking this does something else. Whatever you don't have to have sub menus like that if, unless you want to. Um, you can actually interact with a shop that's just like this, where you click on a sword right here and you buy the sword. So it gives you a lot of flexibility in what you're able to do. Um, it just opens up a whole new world of coding up uh, possibilities for you in, in Bedrock, which is always kind of pleasant in Bedrock. So, okay. Um, at the end of this chain, there's this little thing going on. And what's what's going on here? Well, this is a, a feature uni unique to Bedrock, which is kind of nice because we don't have a whole lot of fun things for Redstone uh, on Bedrock compared to Java. But this is one of the cool things that we have in, in Bedrock. So... Pistons actually act as a component to the redstone system in this in this version of the game, which means that when a redstone dust is placed next to a piston, it automatically connects to it. Now, the way this is special here is if this was any other block, uh, that wouldn't happen. So if I went like this, um, you can see the redstone just stops. It goes right into these comparators and it stops there. It won't go in. So normally what I'd have to do if I wasn't able to do this is I would have to get a repeater or a comparator and go like this. And that would push the signal into a block over here. But with this mechanic, uh, I'm just going to make some room. With this mechanic, uh, I can instead uh, make some more room. Uh, get rid of this. I can place this piston right here. I want to have it facing in, like, well, facing towards a, um, an obsidian block. That way the, the uh, piston head can't, um, can't like, uh, retract and... Um, activate. We don't want it to be able to activate. Otherwise, it'll just make noise and it's really annoying. So we want to make sure we disable it by blocking it with the obsidian. And now we can place a redstone torch on top of that um, piston. So what happens is when the system is powered and running, um, this redstone torch is deactivated. But as soon as the system turns off, then this redstone torch will re-enable and then this command will run. And this command is impulse unconditional needs redstone and Here's the command, we're cloning the block above to, again, the beginning of the system. And that is the contr main control panel. So what happens is, uh, this is why if I'm using the system and I leave it on a different page, like I leave it on this screen, when the system unpowers, look back here, you'll see this will power, watch, ready? It's gonna unpower and it's gonna load the original, original screen, so the original um, chest back into place. You see that? And if you didn't see it, one more time. So I'm gonna go here, I'm on a different screen right now. Watch right there, okay. So you can see that it lit up um, once the system turned off, which means it just cloned back the original chest back into place. So that's what's happening here and that's why this works so well. Um, so very quickly, if you don't already know how to give yourself um, unique uh, items with uh, you know, unique data values, here's an example of paper. So this is, um, you don't have to actually put this as a command block. You can actually just type slash give like that. And also same for this one. So I'll just, this is slash clear. So I'm going to uh, clear my inventory and show you this example. So if I click this button, I'm going to be given um, paper, one paper with a data value of five. So that paper has a data value of five. And if I was to go into my inventory here and grab a real paper and I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab, so this is real paper with a data value of zero. This is paper with a data value of five. If I try to delete, um, like let's see, so I wanna clear um, paper with a data value of five, let's clear uh, 64. So I'm gonna delete 64 paper myself for myself, but with a data value of five. So um, I'm doing this. 
So here, let me change this to survival so you can see how many items I have. Right now I have 32 paper and then one unique paper. When I clear all the paper with the data value five, watch what happens. Well, just, just what we expected. It left behind the real paper because that has a data value of one and it got rid of the, the basically the, um, the, the, the version of the item that shouldn't exist, the version with the specific data value that we're looking for. And that is exactly how the system is running. So at, at simplest, what you could do here, just, just as a small example, very small example of what the system is actually doing, um, we can do this. So this is an example of how all chain blocks are set in the system. So we could say, uh, I could do title at P action bar. Title at P action bar P of A. I believe that's correct. Okay, so when I give myself paper, so the weird thing is, you see it deleted that. It's very strange. Um, and this is a good example of, your, the only headaches you'll have when you do the system is this. So I, um, so this paper has a data value of zero. And if I throw this for a second, so it's on the ground, and I give myself a paper with a data value of five, if I pick this up, it actually, they actually combine. And there's some weird situation where the paper, when it can stacks into itself like that, even though it has different data values, it can stack into itself. Something happens where the paper inherits one of the data values. So in this case, it may have inherited the new data value of five, or it may have inherited the data value of zero. So if I run this, it may not run, or it may just delete all of them um, when they weren't all the same kind initially. Yeah, see, I think it's whatever one you have in the inventory first. So, um, it's kind of, yeah, it's something like that's happening. So right now, as you can see, I did have, I did give myself that item, but now it's not um, deleting. Um, and that's, again, that's just, these items don't work well when they get mixed. They, they basically, and, and depending on the order that they mix in, if you put like drop um, the data value one onto this one or the the real ones onto the data value ones, some, some combination of that will basically convert them to either being real or all fake. So, uh, so how can we avoid that? Um, yeah, we don't want to have these items on us. And if we do, we want to rename them right away. So when you're making this system, here's what you do to make it very, very easy for yourself. So say you wrote down that you want data value two to be um, sunset. Let's just say that. Let's just say paper is going to be sunset now. So rather than giving yourself multiple data values at once, you need to rename this stuff as you get it. Like you have to. So I could put paper up here and I'm going to say this is going to be sunset now. Okay, so now this is a paper with a data value of five that I've named sun Sunset. And if I give myself, um, let's, let's go back and make it creative. If I grab a paper, I'm gonna grab a whole stack. Here's Here lies in the, the solution. Okay, so I just gave myself a stack of paper, but they didn't mix this time. And that's because this one has a unique name. Because this one has a unique name, it's safe from that, that error happening. So whenever you use items with um, unique data values, um, it's, it's usually better to give them a name so that you don't have any issues. It's almost it's better always to give them a name. So make sure you give them some sort of special name. Um, that way it can be targeted properly and there's no chance it can mix with your other items and corrupt like and, and match their data value or make their data value match it. So that can be a real headache. So when you are making the system, you would say, oh, I want that to be the sunset and then um, so let me go back and see the other game mode. And here, okay, so so let's say I want um, six to be night. We'll just, or midnight, let's, let's do that. Okay, so paper, oh, I have to delete one of these. So now um, I have, oops. Oh, it actually, oh, that's right. It gave it, it gave it to me on this, this stack. Oh, I don't want to name it. Oh my God, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, okay. So I have this paper and I'm going to name it Midnight. Okay. 
So here we're gonna name this, this is a data value of six, we're gonna name it midnight, midnight. Okay, so that's how you wanna handle it. You basically wanna um, give yourself each data value item and then rename it instantly. Give yourself the next data value, data value item and then rename it instantly. You do that over and over and over and over and over until you have this whole system built up. So again, it can be a little tedious and all, all really takes a little planning. Um, and yeah, so hopefully you understand the system. Uh, I know it is, it is confusing and I don't want this video to be any longer than it already is. Um, again, it's, it's a simple concept, but it, it, it's masked by confusion because it just looks confusing because like, you're like, oh my God, how do I, this is so much, like, look at all this stuff that's going on here. How do I possibly, ugh, um, it's just the illusion. So if you want, to, uh, let me, let me show you before, um, before I end this video, let me show you how to summon mobs thing works. Cause that's just one, one layer deeper. So, um, here's the summon mobs window. So when it detects a nether star with a data value of one right here, so it says, oh, nether star data value one, we are able to clear that. When that happens, then it will clone this chest into location with this one right here. So this one that closes into location is the one with passive mobs and hustle mobs. So this is like, now you have to select, select which one you're choosing. So you have to go into another menu from here. And here we still have the, back, the main menu. Um, and then right over here is where, I should have renamed these. Uh, this is this is hostile menu, and this is passive menu. Okay, so once it detects um, that you've selected an ender eye of one, which you would be selecting if you clicked on this. Um, so if you select an ender eye with a data value of one, it will load this chest, which looks familiar, and this back. This back is actually the same nether star with the data value of one that I used um, right here, but I just renamed it from summon mobs to, to back because I don't need, I already have a, a command set up um, right here to handle the nether star one, um, what happens when we have that item. So it's, it's going, I basically I can already use it as a back because it's just going to reload this chest again. Um, it's going to reclone that chest. So whenever they click this, just like in the first chest, it will just load this chest again. So that's how we can go back. Um, if you want, you can make a totally different icon, but you'd have to make another clear command for it. Um, and then here, uh, same concept. When they click the slime ball with a data value of one, which is this one, that's a data value of one. When they click that and the game is able to clear it from them, then this command will run successfully and it will clone this chest to that player and summon chicken. And an example of the teleporting and summoning codes um, is right here. So um, when it when it does um, kill the item that will lead to teleportation, it then teleports the player. So it will teleport the player closest to that chest. We want to teleport one player this time. We don't want to do at all. We want to teleport just one player and we want to make sure, so it's the nearest player to that chest, plug in the chest location and put a radius of six. I believe six is the max radius that you have to interact with the like open a chest. I believe if not, you put like seven or so. Um, and here is just the coordinates that you want to teleport the person to. And you can also type in facing and then another coordinate where they would be looking. So this is going to make them always look in the same direction after they teleport, which is, I think, really cool. And I always use that in my teleport commands because it just, it's just cooler. And then we just obviously clone this chest back at the end. So it just replaces itself, um, just like always. So that's, that's how you do that. And then um, where is the other one I was going to show you? Okay, yeah. Okay, so here's chicken. So when I do decide I want to summon the zombie or chicken, they're both right here. So if it, again, if it detects ender eye two, which is going to be um, what what triggers summoning the zombie. So if it clears uh, that item from you, it will then execute at the player that's nearest that chest within a radius of six, um, which is their re that rel relative position, which means their ex data player's exact location summon a zombie to that exact location. So it will summon a zombie right on top of that player. Um, and then it will just clone that chest back into position. So they can click again and summon another, summon another zombie. So example, so I can I can stand here and I can very quickly go to summon mobs, click on hostile mobs and spam press zombie, like that. And now I have a whole bunch of zombies. Kill at E type equals zombie. 
that's all I've dealt with. Okay. So, I'm trying to think, is there any, okay, the last thing I'll go over um, is, yeah, how just general runs so empowering very quickly. So if these blocks are powered directly, which they are when they are powered, um, then they will power the blocks to the left and right of them, which in this case doesn't matter because all of these blocks to the left and right are powered already. But it'll also power the blocks directly above and below. So just like right here, this block gets powered and this block will become powered as a result as well. So you can actually stack this um, to be three, three um, layers. Um, the only thing is that you would eventually not be able to see this very middle area right here. Um, but if the commands are set up properly, that doesn't really matter too much. Um, but you can lay this out however you want. So for example, you could have it set up where you have a layer up here that goes all the way back like this. And then you could go down here, right here, and then make another layer like this. And that can go this way. And that could go, you could do that for the whole system. Um, and that's, that's something you could do. So I just wanted to explain that that's an option. Um, if you don't know much about redstone, how it powers and how it works. So yeah, this system, that's pretty much everything. And it, it does take a little bit of planning. Again, the bottom is all the items in the system um, that when, like those are all this, like those options in the menus. So when you go into like here, all these options are found below. And that's why the commands are a little bit longer because it's telling them like, what do we want to do? Oh, we want to set TNT to false when this happens. Then we want to clone this block back into place. Okay. So um, yeah, that's the system in a nutshell. Uh, not a nutshell, that was quite an, ex yeah, I, I think I did a good, hopefully, hopefully I did a good job explaining. Let me know if you guys understand it because I really, really did try to explain this stuff. Well, it is confusing. Um, it's a very simple premise. All it's really, the whole system thrives off of clearing an item from the player um, and that item um, being a specific uh, data value. That's the, that's the whole system in a nutshell. And you can do anything with that concept. It doesn't have to be limited to this kind of system, but it's good to know that you can execute code when you clear a special data value from the player. Um, so uh, let me know if uh, yeah this was helpful and uh, if you learn anything from this or if you're gonna make the system yourself um, in some capacity. And uh, please uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, do all that cool stuff. I really appreciate your time, guys. And as always, uh, have a nice day.